Good morning. How's everyone doing today? Good. My name is Luis Garcia. I'm with CTMD in Maryland. We're a Renaissance Center franchise. Um, I've got four stores in Maryland and three in Maine. Anyway, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about successful account management. And what I did is I brought Keith Brock with me. Keith is one of my general managers in Baltimore um, and just runs phenomenal collections numbers. I mean, people sit there and go, ooh, Baltimore, how do you do that? Well, a lot of it has to do with having the right program, the right processes. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over to Keith, and Keith is going to talk about successful account management and kind of a, a process that we go through and that we use. So, Keith? It's all, all yours. Um, we put this presentation together. We wanted to narrow it down to just a uh, small group of things, keep it within our hour. Uh, what we came up with is really 4.9 ways for successful account management can be your people, your products, your programs, and your procedures. I mean, all of these uh, nutted down to the very bare minimums contribute to the overall collections of the store. Uh, we started with people because we believe that people are probably the most important part of your collections process. Uh, you know, your salespeople, your delivery techs, your store managers, your account managers. Uh, products, probably one of the most overlooked facets of collections are your products and how they pertain to uh, hitting your collection goals each week. Uh, you know, are your products functional? Are they affordable? You know, do they excite people? Uh, the programs and the procedures, and we're going to go through each of these uh, in order here. Start with people. The first person that your customer is going to deal with when they walk into the store, I mean, ideally, is the salesperson. You know, the salesperson's coming out, they're showing off the product, they're talking up the programs, um, they're explaining the processes to your new customers and your current existing customers. Uh, but how it pertains to collections uh, or your account management uh, is the order form. And that's the salesperson's first step. I mean, there, is the contact information valid? Do they have a good cell phone? Uh, one of the practices we use at our store, uh, some other stores are doing it as well, uh, is the cell phone number. We call it right there while the customer's there. You know, call it in front of the customer, tell them, hey, save this to your phone. This is our number. You know, that way you know they gave you the right cell phone number. Uh, second thing, you know, do they have a stable source of income? And we'll talk a little bit more about this in procedures and programs, but um, you know, what's a stable source of income? TCA, I mean, is that acceptable? Temporary cash assistance or unemployment? I mean, unemployment runs out. I can't in good faith put somebody on a two-year contract if they're receiving income for 26 weeks and that's how they declare they want to pay you. You know, so is it stable? Do you have good contact information? The salesperson also sets the tone of collections going forward with the customer. Um, you know, it's, it's about tone and it's an environment to be successful in account management. Um, when they're closing that agreement, I mean, you're going to hear this a lot today, is the proper due date. Having that customer on the due date they request. Uh, if you've been in the industry for any amount of time, you've seen salespeople overzealous set up monthly customers, take a weekly payment, they do the second week of the month when they have no income coming in. So, you know, it's their responsibility to get that proper due date set up. Explain the reinstatement options. Every state's a little different. I'm sure all your stores are a little bit different. Uh, in Maryland, for example, you know, we have two-day reinstatement option. Customer comes in, they reinstate the contract. You know, they have a, a small fee associated with that, but they have two days to reinstate the closed rental agreement. Um, and again, this is just, they're setting the tone. They're setting the tone. You know, as we go through these people, I mean, every one of these people are going to contribute to your store, uh, to the collections, results that you, you know, get each week. Um, but this is where they really they establish it. They set it up. Uh, the other thing a salesperson can do to contribute to better overall store collections or store numbers are encourage other payment options. You know, a lot of stores, like we, you heard talked about before, are moving toward online payments or auto debit or ACH or whatever you'll call it. But if your company has one, that's the best customer. You're not collecting on something that they're automatically paying. You know, they set it and forget it. They walk away from it. Uh, you don't hear from them again until the end of the contract when you're trying to sell them something else, so the end of the agreement. Uh, online payments, make sure you get them set up as best you can. Uh, less work you have to do, the better experience it's going to be for that customer. All right, the second person your customer is going to interact with is that delivery technician. Um, and again, keep it in mind that you know, the tone needs to be the same. Can your delivery tech close that rental agreement just as well as your salesperson did? If your salesperson you know, goes through the time to match up a product with a customer over the phone, and they don't sign paperwork, they're not in the store to you know, sign. They know what it is, it's a computer. They give you some specs, your salesperson matches it up. You send a delivery check to deliver that laptop. Uh, can they close the agreement just as well as your salesperson did? You know, we, we trust that they're gonna 
install a sofa in the right spot, and they're going to set a bedroom set up and hook up all the rails, but you know, can they close the agreement? Have you seen your delivery tech close an agreement? You know, do you know how well versed they are in, in what the agreement actually says? And again, their secondary responsibilities. Once they do the agreement, or if it's just a delivery ticket, whatever the case might be, are they verifying that the amount, their weekly payment or their monthly payment, and their due date is correct? Again, back to the due date. Um, you hear it a lot, every slide. <laughs> uh, delivery tech, you know, another responsibility there is just to eliminate their payment obstacles. Uh, if that delivery tech is late to a customer's home to deliver a television, then you know, they're given that mindset that late must be okay. If we give them a two-hour window and we're not there in a two-hour window, then all of a sudden late isn't acceptable. You know, it's all, it must be how they do business. Late's okay. And you can't let that happen. Uh, another payment obstacle, and you know, come across this more than anybody would like to admit, is you know, why am I going to pay for a product I can't use? Did they forget my remote control? You know, is my bed frame hooked up? Where are my end tables on my living room package? You know, th these are things that, in the customer's mind, will justify a reason not to pay you on time. You know, real simple steps, um, but you have to realize that the delivery tech, I mean, that's one of their primary responsibilities is to remove those obstacles. Product testing, training the customer, you know, if you have the extra time, your delivery techs are well-versed, you might have them hook up to the Wi-Fi, a smart TV, a laptop, whatever the case is, you know, and point being, you just don't want them leaving the home with the customer, you know, not as satisfied as possible. And delivery completion. Uh, a lot of you are probably using what they call delivery checklist. Um, we call it a smooth start. Uh, what that is, is while the technician is in the home with the customer, uh, the customer, after it's installed, is actually going to call the store. They're going to talk to myself, you know, the store manager or one of the sales folks, and we're going to ask them, you know, is everything set up the way you want it? Is the living room placed where you need it at? Do you have all the accessories? Did they explain to you how this product works? With callbacks, uh, people have been in the industry for a while, what you see is delivery tech, they bring home a delivery ticket, or they bring into the store a delivery ticket, you get a little stack of them on the counter, and two or three days later, you know, you may or may not get around to calling the customer back. Hey, you know, does the TV work properly? Did they hook it up? Did they show it to you? Two or three days later is not the time to be finding out that it's not right. You know, you've had two or three days of resentment building up, um, buyer's remorse, or runner's remorse, whatever you want to call it. And so what we do is we have that, the delivery technician, you know, they check it off, everything's installed. They have the customer call right then and there. If there's an issue, you know, again, we're removing an obstacle, we're making sure the customer's satisfied, and when that bill comes around to being due, it's not getting any surprises. Um, so if that's not something you're practicing, it's probably a good idea. If you, need, uh, if you need service, schedule it right then while you're on the phone with that customer. You know, remotes, they get left in trucks. They get left in the store. Power cords, this, that, and the others. Um, we're real fortunate we use an online scheduling program through Google. We have a calendar. We don't use a DAP. And the delivery technicians that we have, I mean, everybody has a smartphone. You know, while they're on their smartphone, while they're in the customer's home, they can literally see my next open spots tonight between 6 and 8. I can swing back around here, bring your washer hoses, hook that up. They don't have to call back and say, hey, when, when can I get back to this side of town? Uh, it, it makes it easy. It makes it easy. Eliminate service calls. Eliminate payment obstacles. The next person, uh, as far as contributes to the overall account manager of the store, the collections, the end of week number, is the store manager. You know, as much as we want to trust our associates, our salespeople, our delivery techs to do the right thing, you know, it's our responsibility to come in and complete the, uh, verify that the order form is complete. Yeah, I trust my salesperson to have verified their income, their residency, this, that, and the other. Um, but, you know, I need to sign off on each of those files. I need to personally inspect it, make sure that it's being accomplished. Uh, the due date with the point of sale system. <laughs> I don't care how long you've been in the business, everyone here has put a customer on the wrong due date. It's happened. Order form, we ask them, how do you get paid? Is it every week? Is it every month? Is it every two weeks? How do you receive your income? And still yet, we get so excited with our one-week free promotions or $20 down sales. You know, you put it into high touch, whatever your point of sale system is, you're going to put the wrong due date. You know, every person just has to be responsible for this, especially the store manager. And then sign off on the rental agreement so you know who's getting what. You know, have, have they matched up the right customer with the right product? Um, you know, it's, and it's an awareness thing. It's an awareness thing. The smooth start. We talked a little bit about this uh, a moment ago with the delivery techs. Um, you know, this is really a brainchild of Luis Garcia. I mean, it's um, removing those obstacles, but it's just, it's just to take that phone call from the delivery tech. If you can get to the phone, if you can get that phone call, feel that phone call personally. Two things I like about it is one, I know where my delivery guys are at. I know they just finished this, you know, they just completed this, so they should be on their way to the next stop according to my Google Calendar. Um, and I've talked to the customer. I've personally talked to that customer. 
you don't have any qualms with you know, our transaction, with our agreement. You're satisfied. We've done what we agreed to do. You know, you're going to do what you, know, you consented to do when you signed the agreement, and that's by paying on such and such date, such and such amount of money. Um, but yeah, the Smooth Start, very valuable program. I can't, can't reiterate Can I enough. On that? Please. You know, one of the things about Smooth Starts is this. We, we were talking about a you know, 24-hour callback. Well, you know, what's the reality of getting that 24-hour callback done? I mean, you have a stack of paper that, you know, I got to go through, I'm going to call these people back and make sure that everything is good. Well, the reality is you can't catch that customer. But man, you can catch them while you're making the delivery. So why not verify everything right then? The other thing is, you know, if you don't get a hold of that customer, when that customer comes in and makes that first payment and you haven't talked to them, Man, you're sitting there sweating, going, gosh, I hope everything went all right with that delivery, you know, because you never know. Yes? What we do is we, do, uh, we have them do a callback yep. when they leave the home after the delivery. Right. And, and that's what this is. This is a, a customer, it's a, we call it a smooth start because it, while that delivery tech is in the customer's home, Doing the setup, we verified, did they set it up right? Did they demonstrate the product? Is it the right product? Do you know how to use it? Do you know your next due date? Do you know how much your next payment is? And it, it avoids all of those issues that pop up at that counter during that first payment, that first interaction. You want them there on time. And the last thing you want is for them to sit there and look at you and go, hey, I never got my remote. You know, I have a three-legged table, you know? <laughs> So, or I didn't know what day my, I didn't know my first renewal payment was this Saturday. Exactly. I didn't know. You know, so again, so, once you've reinforced it with the, with the salesperson, once you've reinforced it with the delivery technician, once you've reinforced it with the store manager and that callback or that smooth start, um, you know, it's awful hard for them to tell you I didn't know on Saturday. It's awful hard to say I didn't know or that's not my pay cycle. And, you know, that's, and that's what we want to eliminate. That's what's worked well for us. Uh, another responsibility of the store manager as it pertains to your rental uh, collection goals at the end of the week is the environment. You know, do you have goals outlined? You know, are you using a company standard? Does your company have a, hey, this is Saturday's number? Uh, more importantly, is this, do you have a Monday number? Which we're going to get to in a few moments. Um, but it has to be a consistent message to and all, you know, to all, all the staff members have to be on the same page. They have to understand, you know, this is, our rental agreement gives you two-day reinstatement option. You know, so all staff members need to be preaching that. That needs to be, um, needs to be the first thing off their mouth, you know, when they're talking about collections. And then last here, here on environment, uh, some stores do this really well, some stores don't. Uh, keep your salespeople away from commitment taking. You know, heaven forbid a customer does allow their rental agreement to expire and you need to talk to them about reinstatement. The salesperson is not the one to be having that conversation. They shouldn't. You know, the salesperson is the one that if they're doing what they should, the customer needs to be doing or they agreed to do, they're selling them more product. You know, they're that friendly face when they come into the store and that's great. Um, but you should have designated people to have that conversation that's more difficult uh, when they want to go outside of the term of your rental agreement, when they're outside of that two-day window, you know, when they run into that financial issue or check gets lost in the mail, whatever the case might be. But your salesperson should not be that person. They should understand the program. They should be able to speak it back verbatim the same way everyone in your store can, um, but they should not be taking those commitments. You found it works better if they don't. And then the last person, hopefully your customer never has to deal with an account manager. I mean, really, an account manager is a fail-safe. They're a safety in football. You know, the account manager is the person you, let, let's hope, again, the customer never interacts with them. Because if you've done everything you can and this customer upholds their end of the agreement and they make their rental renewal payments on time, they shouldn't talk to the account manager. But if they have to, the account manager, his duties and how it pertains to the successful collections management or account management, uh, he makes calls, he makes lots of calls. Fallout calls, due to pay, manage your Monday open calls. Um, Again, Mondays being more important than Saturdays. We're going to get to that a little bit. I know Lewis, he's ready to talk about that Monday open, how, how important that is. Uh, but the past due calls, customer misses the agreement, contract expires. That's your account manager. That's what they're doing Monday morning. That's what they should be doing. They sit there reminding those customers, hey, we missed you Saturday. You didn't stop by. You didn't call in. What's going on? What time can you make the payment? Take it right now for you. Uh, they make calls to references and employers. You know, some companies are a little hesitant to call references. Um, Quite frankly, you know, we like to look at it like training the customer to a degree. We don't hear from them pretty much immediately on Monday. You know, we're trying to figure out why. Why didn't I hear from you? What's going on? You know, this is not our responsibility to remind you to uphold your end of the agreement. 
It's not. And this has to be the mentality of your store. You know, it's not our job to call you about your past due. It's not our job to call you about the expiration of your lease. You know, that responsibility lies with the customer. And when we're talking to that customer, we're asking them, you know, why didn't you call me? Obviously, you didn't make the renewal payment. Why didn't you call me? What prohibited you from doing what we expected or, you know, what you were obligated to do? Um, that responsibility has to fall on that customer. Um, because we know they're on the correct payment cycle. You know, we know where they are. Uh, at least you know, we don't take for granted that we know everything, but we've verified this with you three, four, five times. We've done our part to make sure you're set up the way you asked to be set up. We've verified we've done our job. So now this responsibility, this obligation falls back on that customer. Uh, account managers also mail letters. If you're not mailing letters, you know, it's a very, very good idea to start. Um, some companies, oh, well, you know, it's postage and it takes time and this, that, and the other. Uh, quite frankly, the U.S. Postal Service will do a lot of your running, what some stores call running, for you. They're delivering a personalized message to that customer's door for next to nothing. That customer moves, fails to you know, inform you they've moved. Uh, a lot of places you'll get a return address. The mail will be returned to you. has their new address on it. You know, so if you're not utilizing letters, uh, at least on a weekly basis, you should be. Uh, certified mail. You know, heaven forbid you have to send that certified letter to that customer. Still, it is a lot cheaper option than going and visiting that home yourself. I mean, what was a certified letter now? Three fifty, four bucks, something like that. Um, the mailman will go right to their house. You'll know if they're there or not. You'll get a signature. You know, I wouldn't over and date it and invest a lot of money, but it's a lot cheaper than driving out to that customer's house. Uh, you look at time displacement. What else that account manager can be doing? What else that delivery tech can be doing? How many calls can you make in an hour? You know, versus driving out to a home, twenty-minute travel time. 10 minutes, 7 11, you know, whatever else they're doing. Uh, but visits, you know, visits inevitably are part of the process. You know, there will be a time that you've sent letters, you've called the customer, you've talked to their references. Uh, it just, you know, for whatever reason, you have not gotten in contact with that person. Uh, if it, eventually, you may have to visit the home, leave a little tag, hey, I was here, or hey, what's going on, Bob? You know, I haven't been able to reach you. Your cell phone number change, job change, your mailbox don't work, you know, what's going on? Um, you know, sometimes you have to visit the job, you have to visit them where they work, and you've got to be cautious. I mean, all the states have certain laws, there are collection practices, you know, if they ask you not to do that, it's probably a good idea not to do that. Uh, but the first time, uh, early in the contract, is, or I'm sorry, early in the agreement as you can, as early in the process, establish the tone. You know, if the customer's only three or four payments in, they've missed, it's Tuesday, I didn't hear from them Monday after I made several follow-up calls, went to their home, maybe left a door tag on Monday, still didn't hear from them. That's probably about the time you should be at their work. You know, this is the first time they've slipped up or not honored their obligation. You know, you don't want to set the tone that this is acceptable for the next 18 months, 24 months, 30 months. You know, go visit them at the job. Hey, left you a few voicemails, left you a note at your home, still haven't heard from you. Make sure we get this back on track right away. You know, the longer you delay that, the more acceptable it becomes in their mind, and the worse your collection numbers will be because of it. So. Now, references, <laughs> references are a great place to visit. You know, if mom is on that order form, hey, mom, it's Wednesday. I've been trying to reach Bob for four days now. His cell phone, you know, no answer. Tried to call his job. Tried to stop by his house. Have you seen him? What's going on, mom? Is he in the hospital or is he out of town? Tell me what's going on. I'm trying to get in contact with this person. Again, you don't want to get into third party disclosure at the jobs or the home. You know, it's not, I'm here to collect a bill. This is what they owe. They rented some product from us. That's not the purpose. Our sole purpose is, I'm trying to get in touch with this person. I'm having difficulty getting in touch with this person. Same thing for your phone calls, any visits. Uh, stay out of third-party disclosure situations. That's how all the people affect you know, your end-of-week number, your Monday number. Products, again, we talked about. Um, easy to overlook how important the products are to the collections process. All right. uh, is the merchandise functional? You know, I, not too many customers are going to pay you for products that don't work. You know, and this is part of the salesperson, you know, if they sell a sofa or rent a sofa to somebody and the sofa is torn or it has a blemish, it's really their responsibility to point that out in advance. You know, you don't want that to be in a customer's home for a week or two and then they notice the nick or broken foot or this, that, and the other. Because um, then they're not going to want to pay you. They don't want to pay you if it doesn't work. Uh, would you pay for a dryer that doesn't dry? I don't think you would. I don't know many people that would. Computer that has a virus, you know, a TV with no remote. How long is acceptable for that customer to wait? 
You know, if, if something is functionally wrong, I mean, should we expect to be paid while that product's being serviced? I know we give them a loaner, and that's great. It may be of suitable quality or similar quality to what they were running initially. Uh, it may not be. Should we expect to be paid? I mean, there are some situations where the right thing to do may be to defer out a week's payment, a month's payment. You know, I don't necessarily know that I expect to be paid on the product that they're, they're running or they're leasing uh, if it's not functional. Uh, big, big thing here, don't let service be a payment obstacle because you know, your account managers or your salespeople, they are hearing that back from that customer when they're making their calls. When it's time to make that payment, you better believe that's one thing. Oh, where's my loaner or where's my original product? I've had this loaner for two or three weeks now. You know, you re remove that as soon as possible. Is the product affordable? You know, I, I know no one in here is overzealous as far as their sales and you know, load up customers with lots of products they can't afford. I'm sure no one's done that. Um, but you know, we have to look and see that we, we're doing the right job of matching up the right person and the right product. You now we've got a brief example here about a lady who works at a coffee shop. You know, we know what she makes per hour, she put it on the order form. We know how many hours a week she has. You know, we may not know that uh, she has no kids or what her other obligations are, uh, but we, you know, we can take away from this. After taxes, this lady's probably making 300 some odd dollars a week. Um, we know her rent's about 850 a month. And you know, she comes in and she's looking at this great big 65 inch 4K TV, smart bells and whistles, 3D glasses included, whatever the case might be. Uh, but it's $45 a week. You know, by the time we add in taxes, waiver, our customer loyalty program, whatever the case might be, you know, this is a $50, $60 obligation per week to this customer. Um, you know, should we approve her? I don't know. I, I can't answer that for you. You know, I can't. If this customer has been with me for six years and she's shown me she can pay $50 or $60 a week, maybe that's a, maybe that's a chance I take, and maybe I do. Customer walks in off the street, I mean, quite frankly, I'm probably looking at that as much as I want that gain for the day. I mean, the right thing to do is probably to match her up something better with her, you know, her finances. Ask her, you know, are, are you leasing your car? Are you renting your car? I mean, probe into it. We're not credit based. You know, I, I don't want to say it's gut feeling because it shouldn't be gut feeling, but you know, you have to feel that customer out. You have to know a little bit about them. You know, is, do you have any other source of income? You know, what else are you making? What other um, costs are associated in your life? Can I squeeze a $200 a month TV into your budget or not? Uh, that should be a question you're asking before you approve something like that. Programs in your store. You know, again, this is a big one for us. Um, we've just, we've been around long enough to know that, you know, your best trained people, your store managers, tenure, tenure, they can still make that mistake, putting people on the wrong pay cycle. I um, mean, that's just the easiest way to lose the customer from the jump. So that Smooth Start program, it's, it's vital to what we do. Um, you know, the salesperson, they, again, they've, they've confirmed that due date when they closed the agreement. The delivery tech, you know, they confirmed the due date and had them call the store to verify it. And then the, G, the general manager, you know, he went into the point of sale system to make sure that everything, all the information we've taken matches up with the way it should be. I mean, this, this one step will really eliminate just a lot of your collection issues and your returns. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure everyone in here can think of at least one customer, for better or worse, that, you know, they lost or was returned, the product was returned, you lost that contract because it was the wrong due date off the jump. Uh, Smooth Start helps eliminate some of that. Managing your Monday open. Okay. Um, end of the week, we have a credit goal. Your store has a credit goal, collections goal. 4.9%, 5%, 7%. Uh, I hope some of the things I hear about 10 and 12% aren't true, but you know, I do know they exist, or at least stores are hitting those kind of thresholds. Um, if you're focused on that Saturday collection number, you're, you're probably not achieving the results that you want. Uh, truth be told, Mondays are 10 times more important than Saturdays. You know, if you look at collections, and you've seen different models before, I'm sure, uh, of where collections and your weekly targets are funneled from Monday down to Saturday, it only makes sense that the smaller the top end of the funnel is, the less work you're going to have to do at the end of the week. Okay? A couple ways to manage that Monday open. Um, fallout starts Saturday by noon. Okay? Fallout, of course, are due to pay calls. Um, you can call it whatever you want, but when they, when they start those calls, we, we say worst first. And worst first are your customers who probably haven't paid you on time since you've started with them. You know, maybe they're consistently two days late or six days late or seven days or they're all over the board. Those are the customers that have proven to you that they need to be called. You know, they need a reminder, a courtesy call, whatever you will call it. Um, but call them first. I mean, at noon, call them first. Uh, the second people, and it may seem contradictory, or uh, you know, 
may seem backwards, but it's not, are the new customers. Okay, because everyone talks past due, but quite frankly, this is an expiration date. They've rented or leased your product for a set amount of time, be it a week, two weeks, or a month, but this is the day that rental is going to expire. Uh, vernacular is important with the customers. You know, oh, you're due today. Well, people pay you know, past due bills all the time. Their rent, their electric, their water. Um, you know, this is your expiration date. You rented it to today. Your rental will expire today at 6 p.m. or 5 p.m. or 8 p.m., whatever time you close your store. This is your expiration date. We've had not heard from you. You've not renewed or purchased more time. You know, if this is a parking meter, you're about to be in the violation zone. You need to feed more quarters to your meter. Um, so, you know, new customers have to understand that. And the great thing about that is, you get to those new customers early enough, what you see is they're not waiting until Saturdays to renew their agreements. They're not waiting until the expiration. You know, they're purchasing the time in advance, Friday nights, Wednesdays, after work, you know, early Saturday mornings, whatever the case might be. Uh, Fall out on your perfectly late customers. You've got to call them anyway. In the business, everyone here has that person in their store, no matter how many times you've talked to them, at times you verified what day they receive their income on, they pay you every Tuesday, which is three days late. You've extended the contract, you've made them do on Tuesdays, that never worked for them. It's not going to, there's just some people inherently are going to pay you late. I don't know if they like paying extra money, I don't know what drives people like this, but they, we, call them, we call them perfectly late customers. Now we're not gonna to concede to the fact that it's acceptable, we're not gonna to concede to the fact that you know, it, they're just gonna pay me on Tuesday, we're still gonna make that call on Saturday. We may throw a sales pitch in there and probably just gonna get a voicemail anyway, uh, but we're never gonna stop making that phone call on Saturday regardless of what that pay history tells us. And then the last people you should be calling on Saturday in order to manage your Monday open are the, the perfectly perfect people. These are customers who've never missed a payment. You know, these are somebody, this is a customer who had a soccer game at one o'clock and it ran over and they just completely forgot. You know, fallout is a two-edged sword. You're gonna get some customers, I don't need the call to remind me, I don't need it but you'll get an equal number of customers, uh, nearly an equal number of customers, hey, thanks for calling me. You know, this game went a little bit longer than I anticipated. I went to the market after the soccer game. Gosh, I'm glad you called me and saved me the reinstatement fee, okay? Um, that's how you call fallout. If you're riding the ship, okay, if your collections have gotten out of whack and um, you, know, you want to hit the targets, as I'm guessing you're in this, in this presentation, you know, there's probably some uh, riding the ship to be done. Um, there's a tool uh, Luis Garcia has used real successfully, some stores we just acquired, and it's I'm sorry calls on Wednesdays. You know, this customer's not past due. This is somebody who paid you late, maybe once or twice over the last month or so. Uh, it's an I'm sorry call, because they're gonna answer the phone. You know, it's, if it was easy to reach them after the fact, we wouldn't need to do this, but it's not. When they're on time and you call them on Wednesday, hey, you know, what are you doing calling me on Wednesday? Why are you calling me? I'm not late. I'm not past due. Uh, what it is is, you know, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry we didn't make our expectations clear, but I can see from your history you've allowed this contract or rental agreement to expire several times. I've seen that over you know, the last four payments you've missed two of them for whatever reason. You know, I'm sorry we didn't put you on the right date, if it's possible at this point. You know, we're still apologizing. We want to make sure we fix this. And they're going to be more receptive to it on a Wednesday than when the account has expired or the rental's past due. Um, this works, you know, it really takes the customer back. At that point, you're taking them off of the defensive, you know, you're, you're wanting to establish uh, the cause uh, of what's caused them to be delinquent or expired or past due. Um, but it just, it takes some of the buffer away from it, you know. Again, then they're not on the defensive. Maybe they're more receptive to listen to what you have to say, uh, understanding that you're trying to correct that problem. You're trying to rectify that, uh, put the issue to bed, move on. Uh, Another way to manage your Monday open, until it gets to an acceptable level, it may be necessary to put all the associates in your store on the phones first thing Monday morning. You know, I'm talking about you pull your salespeople off. You know, hey, showroom's okay. Get in here on the phones. Uh, your delivery technicians, uh, your account managers, the store manager, okay? Until that number gets to be acceptable, you have, you have to make sure your customer understands it's not okay. It's not. When we, when we signed the agreement with you, had you told us, I intend to pay you three to four days late every week, we would have told you no thanks. That's not what you agreed to. When you sold them the product or you rented the product to them, you did it under the premise that you would be paid on time, every time. And if they didn't want to pay anymore, they could return it. You know, so we, we can't concede to the fact that it's okay to start missing payments a month in, two months in, two years in, 10 years into the relationship, okay? 
they have to understand that you know, this is how it works. This is what you agree to. Uh, the strongest collector or your best account manager needs to be in the front in that one to seven cycle of your past dues. Okay? Um, again, it almost seems counterintuitive, but your, your best collector is probably your best listener. They probably are. Um, if they just missed the payment because they got busy on Saturday or you know, they had another obligation or the pay cycle changed, he's going to be one that listens that can filter out the BS from the truth. You know, he, he's going to know the customers just a little bit better than uh, your delivery techs. He's going to know the customers a little bit better than your store manager, even your salespeople, who again shouldn't be working collections any more than is necessary to write the ship. Uh, if your state allows it, three call throughs a day on Monday. You know, you should have, uh, if not everyone, but the majority of your customer past due base called by 12 o'clock on Monday before lunchtime. You should have. Can I interject? Please. You know, a couple things. Um, the Wednesday I'm sorry calls is kind of want to address that for a second. This is where you, you look at your, your people that are going to be due this coming week on Saturday. You go through and you pick out everyone that's been late the last three or four times. And you give them a call. They are going to answer the phone. They're going to answer the phone and ask you, why the heck are you calling me? I paid my bill. Well, obviously, during the last payment cycle, we didn't get them on the right date. So what you want to do is you just want to say, look, I, I just want to apologize to you. I didn't set you up right, and it's been costing you money. And, and I'll tell you what, they will listen. And the next question is, when do you get paid again? And they're going to say, well, I get paid this Friday. Well, great. Well, do you want me to set you up for this Friday? I mean, you'll be due, you're due this Saturday, but you can come in Friday. You know, it's not a big deal. We get more payments in advance. And, you know, we, it really does right the ship. It, it just helps to get that Monday open where you want it. Because it's really about getting that customer on the right due date. It's about setting the tone, as we said earlier. And, and that is the biggest thing. Now, the all hands on deck on Mondays, one of the things we do is we don't call people that are eight day plus on Mondays. We only call one to sevens, especially when you're riding the ship, because everyone that was eight day or more past due, eight days or more past due, they were all one day at one time or two days. So why not catch all that low hanging fruit first thing in the morning on Monday between eight and 10? If you have everybody making those phone calls, you're gonna get through all of those calls quickly. Within two hours, you can have your letters done by 11. And then in the mail, let the postman run them. And guess what? Some of those people are going to pay you. That mail is going to cross, and they're going to call you and say, hey, I made my payment, but you sent me a letter. It's like, yep, my bad. I sent it out at 11. You paid after 11. So, but the thing is, is again, it's all about setting that tone. Now, none of this is aggressive. It's not passive aggressive. It's just about taking a stand for what we ask for what we expect. I mean, we give great customer service, we give excellent product, and what we ask for in return is respect for the rental agreement. So, back to you, Keith. But, no, it, it's a great point, you know, and I, and I don't want to sound passive aggressive, but truth be told, it's what, they, it's what their customer agreed to do uh, when they signed the bottom of that agreement. You know, they agreed to pay you on this cycle. Um, so there's, there's nothing wrong with having the expectation they're going to uphold and continue to do what they agreed to do. You know, that's, that's, that's not a bad thing. And if, you know, if your programs are working in your store and your, your policies are working and your people are working the programs, you know, the, some of this is stuff that you, you shouldn't have to do. You know, I, sh I shouldn't have to make any Wednesday I'm sorry calls if my customer base understands, you know, their obligation and, you know, uh, we know they're on right cycle. I shouldn't be making Wednesday calls. But if you've gotten off kilter and maybe you've had some staffing changes and you need to, uh, Write the ship. Again, that, that's what this is for. That's what Wednesday is for. Now, Fallout, that's an that's a every week thing. I don't care how good you are. That's a great idea. Um, the all hands on deck Mondays. Again, when you've fallen off and your Monday open, I mean, if you're open and above a 15 on Monday, you know, then you probably should be writing the ship. Um, and then lastly, we talked uh, just a little bit briefly here about uh, the cost of running. <clears throat> you know, we, we hire good people. We work with good people. We train good people. Um, but running is a very expensive proposition when it's unnecessary. 
you know, if you've exhausted every resource you have with, by phone and by letters, um, then maybe it's necessary to run. You know, and in that situation, I hope you're able to match up an address where you need to knock on a door uh, next to a delivery or next to a return that's already scheduled. So you're not a, a setting, si setting time aside exclusively for runs. Okay? Very expensive proposition. You know, you're, you're paying them by the hour, your deterioration on your truck, your fuel cost, um, for what is most of the time a futile attempt. I mean, quite frankly, I mean, we have, I've, I've seen before stores that send account managers out for four or six hours a day. Hey, go clean up some of this back, go clean up some of this metal. Uh, and they may return to you with one payment. You know, sometimes that's necessary. Uh, but it, costing is a very, or it's very cost ineffective to, to run all day. Um, and outside of a first payment default, I can't see a good reason to be at someone's house on a Monday, you know, unless they're a first payment default. And again, we want to set that tone. We, we know that we're not going to run their account every day. We know we don't have time for that. You may have four or five, 600 customers, whatever this case. We know we can't get it someone out there every day. But now if this is a first payment default, we need them to believe or at least, well, at least be under the impression this is important enough to us. We didn't hear from you on your expiration date, which is probably a Saturday. We didn't hear you on the first call through on Monday. We reached out. You know, we made an attempt to contact you to find out what's going on. Um, first payment default by the afternoon on Monday probably should be at their door. You need them to believe in the urgency and the importance of what's urgent and important to you. The customer has to understand that. Procedures in your store, okay? Uh, inherently, as operators, especially owners, we, I mean, we know what we believe should happen. But you know, do you have a procedure in your store for various situations? in regards to uh, collections. Uh, a good versus a bad order form. Um, you know, what is your minimum expectation for job history or the length of the current address? Uh, it's a shame, but a lot of people who just move or just start a new job are usually the people walking in your door that need new furniture or that believe they now can acquire or afford uh, new rental merchandise. You know, is it acceptable? Do you have a cap? You know, do you qualify them for a certain amount of money? Do you look at them and say, hey, you've worked at your job for five to 10 years, you're probably a more stable customer than someone who just started at Amazon or wherever last week and you know, just received your first paycheck. Um, you should have a procedure for that. You, know, you can assess, or maybe your owners, the store managers, you can assess your own level of risk. Um, but it should be cognitive because when you're not there and you don't have that policy, what happens is your delivery tech who's trying to look good or maybe you've got a promotion that week, he wants to win a contest Somebody walks in, inevitably it's going to happen where they just got a new job or they just got a new apartment, and he's going to load them up. He's going to give them that package rate. He's going to look at you smiling like, I did a great job. I just gave this person a $600 a month bill. But my potential grew today, my bore, my account, I got a new account on rent. So you, know, you should have a procedure. Everyone should know what is acceptable. You know? um, how much do we approve a new person for? How, how long do they have to be at their job or their new residence? Uh, we talked earlier, is, is TCA or unemployment acceptable as a source of income? Or child support. Or child, support. Um, child support may be a little bit more stable than an unemployment or a temporary cash assistance, but can you in good faith set them up for an 18 or 24 month agreement with a six month income source? You know, do you get into, does your store, does that person need a, a, a co-runner or someone else living on the rental agreement? Heaven forbid it would ever go into collections. I hate to tell you, but TCA, you're not going to collect. You can get a judgment all you want. There's nothing to be had from TCA. Unemployment's the same way. The courts aren't going to cut off someone's unemployment to award you. You'll get awarded. You'll never collect anything. You know. So how, how stable is that? What's your, pro, uh, what's your procedure on that? And then an old color time phrase, and probably even older than color time itself, on the order form. Um, Cousin, cousin, friend, friend, never see your stuff again. You know, we've, we've all seen that. You know, references, uh, I know Renaissance Center, the franchise, they even tell you, you know, uh, few of them need to be family members. You know, um, we all see friends come and go. We all have cousins we haven't talked to in years. Few of them need to be family members. Good versus bad commitments. And again, this is, you know, your store's gonna vary. What is your procedure for this? You know, who can take a two day commitment? You know, that's within the term of the agreement. I mean, personally, in our stores, anyone can take what's in the term of our agreement. Our reinstatement period is two days. So if a customer calls, we, we don't give them a whole lot of slack about two days. Hey, are you off your cycle? You know, we might ask them what happened. 
uh, yada, yada, but quite frankly, anyone can do that because we agreed to do that when we set up the agreement with the customer. Um, but a week commitment. Can anyone just say, yeah, uh, call into your store, say, hey, I won't be there until Friday. Can anyone in your store just say, yes, that's okay, that's acceptable? You know, is there a list of questions that must be asked before that can happen? Um, you know, what is your procedure for that? A month. You know, we, we take commitments for a month. Sure we do. You know, after we establish what, what's going on with it, and there are certain people who can do it, certain people that can't, do you have a procedure? Because I'm telling you, having a procedure for this, because it's going to arise in your stores, uh, will make you more successful. Will, will help your end of your week number. Uh, does the commitment date match the reported pay date that we have for our customer? You know, uh, if they're calling you because they missed a payment and they're supposed to be paid weekly and they want a two-week commitment, well, did your pay cycle change? You know, what's the reason? You know, what's your procedure for that? Again, you make them come to the store and fill out a new order form. Because what we approved them for, and when we signed the agreement, it was based on the fact that you had a weekly income, and now you're telling me you're every two weeks. You know, is that grounds for telling them, I need a new order form, I need new information on you, because that doesn't match what we agreed to. You know, this lease is expired, this rental is expired. Um, you may reinstate it, you may not. I don't know if I'm willing to do business with you now that you're on a monthly basis. I, I want to, I mean, I want to make as much money as I can from you know, anyone who wants product. I want to sell them as many products as I can, um, but I may need new information. You know, what is, what's your procedure for that? And again, making sure we collect enough money to get them on whatever that new cycle is, you know, if that pay cycle changed. And we take a one week commitment and the customer's paid bi-weekly and they're perpetual off their cycle, then we fail to do our job. You know, then it's our fault. We're, we're losing customers and losing money. Then it's our fault. All right. Uh, other procedures in your store, things that are going to happen with you there in your absence. Um, you know, extensions versus credit holds. When do you use which? You know, when is the right time to extend a customer? When is the right time to maybe have them return the product and hold it in your store? A lot of states have a 45-day return period where, you know, you, they can delay out the payments and bring it into your store and they don't accumulate any more weekly or monthly payment obligations toward it while you're holding it. Um, you know, we do credit holds quite frequently in Maryland when necessary. Um, but how do you determine, you know, what, what's the right time to extend them and just say, oh, don't worry about the payments. You just come pay me when you have the money or to pick up the product and hold it until the right time is right for the customer. Uh, you know, a lot of it has to do with is it a short-term issue or is it a permanent problem? You know, did the axle fall out of your car or did you just splurge on Friday night? What's, what's the reasoning behind it? What's the rationale? Um, but, you know, if, again, if you don't have this procedure and your staff don't know, if you don't have that unified voice, it's going to get lost in translation, folks. You, you know, you need to have a reason. Well, what's your qualifier for an extension? What, what makes it acceptable for a staff member to even offer that or talk about it to a customer? Uh, and lastly, um, Lou, I'm going to let you handle the box here because I know you're big on the customer breaking it down into segments and whether they have the ability and willingness to pay you. You know, what we did is a long time ago, we kind of sat down and said, okay, well, if you're going to work with somebody, you really want to work with somebody who has the willingness and the ability to pay, right? I mean, and, and so what we did is we kind of put it in this matrix. And you kind of want to live in the blue, if you will, and not so much in the gray. Um, so if the customer has the ability and they have the willingness, but they just didn't pay you for whatever reason, that's where you have that best communicator listening for the why. Because here, the deal is, is we want to keep as much product out on rent as possible, right? And we want to get them on the right pay cycle. So this is the person that you really want to work with. Now. Here's a person has the ability, but they aren't willing to pay you, all right? Something happened and they're just not paying you. They could, but they didn't. That's another one where your communicator can dig in and find out. Now, this is one where you kind of get into that mode where it's like, wow, do I really want to continue this relationship with this person? Do I want to keep doing business with this person? And a lot of times, the, digger you, the, the more you dig and the deeper you dig, you can right that ship and get them back into this blue area or into the green, which is where they're paying you on time. Now, once you get into this, the bottom half, look, they don't have the ability. They want to, but they just don't have the means to do it. I hate to say it, this is that credit hold situation, okay? When things get right, man, I'd love to give it back to you. I'll start you right where you left off. You know, again, I'm not looking to lose business. What I want to do is, I want to find a way to keep them with the product. So this is one of those respect things where you really 
you know, let him know, once you're on your feet, man, come back and we'll take care of you. <clears throat> now, you have the other person. They have no ability. They're not willing to pay you. Just pick them up. I mean, don't, don't hold on to it because I gotta look good and I don't wanna lose on my numbers and that type of thing. Don't reality convert. These are things that you can figure out real quickly, like the first week, if you're asking the right questions and if you're following this matrix. It's a real simple thing, but if you're thinking about it and you roll it out and you talk to your coworkers about it and you make sure everyone's clear, you know, it's that willingness and ability to pay. That's that person that I'm gonna work with, okay? Okay. Thank you, sir. Sure. No, I, um, it, it's the truth. You know, a lot of times we, we want to say, you know, we, we get to talking to this person that, you know, they can't pay you, or I'm sorry, they're here. They can't pay you. They, ha they have no more money. They have no money coming in at all. You know, we want to save that customer. We feel like, oh, well, the right thing to do is I'll extend them for a few more weeks and, you know, they'll eventually have some money. Uh, you know, if you've been in the business uh, long enough, you'll know that, that that usually doesn't work out for you. It usually doesn't. You know, pick the product up, hold it in your store. Like he said, you know, save them face, you know, uh, save them as much self-respect as you can. When you're ready, I, I'm going to hold this for you. You know, I, I have this ready for you. And then call them. 45 days later, you haven't heard from that person, call them. Maybe you do keep it on the books, but you keep it on the books in your store. You know, you set it in the back room, set it to the side, put a tag on it. Um, you, you don't want to lose them. You don't. But if they have no money, they have no money. If they don't see money coming in, there's no money coming. There's no sense to leave it out there. You know, it's just, it's just a foolish proposition. That's the four, and this is the point nine. You know, this is the point nine. We're going to go some odds and ends here, just some clean house. Uh, you know, Napoleon Hill uh, it says, we quoted here, uh, the starting point of all achievement is desire. Okay? You have to want to improve your collections numbers. It has to be, uh, it has to be a focus. You know, if, if you're accepting 5.9, if you're acceptable to 6.9, if you're accepting 9.9, whatever the case might be, you, that's what you'll hit. You know, that's where you'll be at. If you tell yourself, I need to be at 4.9 or less, and uh, you desire to be there, you, you can get there very easily. Uh, odds and ends, number one, Lou, every store is different, but having the right peoples, the right people, products, programs, and procedures in place will yield the desired, uh, desired results. Folks, if you, if you don't have programs and procedures in place for collections, then you don't and you won't. You won't hit numbers if your staff doesn't know how to handle the situation. If you haven't made it clear and you haven't made it one voice and you haven't made it the tone of your store, you won't hit collection goals. You just won't. Monday's numbers are more important than Saturday's. Okay? It's, for those of you that don't believe it, it's a difficult concept um, to swallow. I can promise you if you start at 15% on Monday and your goal is 5% on Saturday, it's going to be easier to achieve that than if you started at 30% on Monday. Right, that's, that's pretty basic, self-explanatory. Start at 15 on Monday, it's easier to get to 4.9 on Saturday. Uh, old adage right here, but every account saved is worth two deliveries. You know, there are, there are times where you want to extend that customer, you want to work through whatever payment issues they're having. You know, that's the business that we're in. We are in that business to find out, to get to the root of why that rental agreement expired, get them back on track. You know, that's, that's where our money is. Um, and in saving those accounts because the people who need rent to own are usually the same people that can't afford it without your help, okay? If they could go buy a 42-inch TV for 500 bucks, they wouldn't be in your store looking for a 42-inch TV for $19. All right, if they didn't live paycheck to paycheck, and this is for the majority, if they didn't need your help, they wouldn't be in your store. Okay, so your people have to be trained what type of help, when to help, you know, when to play the guy that reminds them of their obligations, uh, what they agreed to. Uh, but quite frankly, these are the people we're dealing with. They, they, need, they need your services. They need you to take that extra second to listen, to find out, to fix the problem, to keep them. They need that thumb on their head sometimes. They need that thumb on, your, on the head. You know, they need you. They haven't been able to establish credit for whatever reason. They need your help, and that's our job is to help them. Uh, persistence breaks resistance. You know, we're not going into the, the dark side, the Darth Vader side of collections here. Um, but the truth be told, you get a customer, they have an issue. Uh, a lot of times, pride gets in the way. I mean, more than anything else, it's, it's pride 
will, will deter and hurt your collections more than um, malicious intent. You know, the majority of our customers don't come to our stores to steal from us. We know it. It happens. Of course it happens. The majority of collection issues are pride. Okay? Um, persistence with that customer, whether it's two phone calls a day or two letters a week or home visits or work visits or visits to references, um, don't give up on it. Don't. You know, account managers, follow up with your account managers. They're the ones making these calls. Folks, it's probably old school to look at call logs, uh, but quite frankly, if it's turned into a personal issue or it's turned into a pride issue, that account manager is only going to work that account for four to six weeks. You know, you may have it on your books, you may not do your charge offs for three or four months. That account manager, I can assure you, if it's become a personal or a pride issue, they've given up, you know, they've resigned the mentality on that account in about four to six weeks. You know, at that point, they, oh, well, I'm not going to get this, or man, I wish somebody else would call this account. I'm so sick of this account. Um, persistence, though, you have to, you know, they have to understand, continue to follow up, continue to make the calls, continue to make the letters, continue to visit the home. You have to continue it. You know, continuing that, that persistence will break that customer's resistance, whether it's pride or malicious. This is a relationship business. You know, we just circled back around to this with the customers that need our help, our, our rent to customers. You know, keep the personalities out of it. You know, this is not about the personality. This is not between you and them. You know, this is not, uh, are, they, are they responsible, this, that, the other. This is their obligation. This is the agreement, and it has to circle back to the agreement at all times. It has to be. Well, Mr. Such and Such, just want to remind you what you agreed to. You know, this is not about, oh, I've talked to you about this already, or we've already had this conversation 20 times. It has to circle back to the agreement because we're in a relationship business and we want to protect their pride. Uh, due dates and pay dates should be as close to each other as possible. Um, I know Lewis and I, we differ on this a little bit. And again, all your stores are going to be different. Your uh, personal experiences will kind of lead to how you run your stores. But uh, some stores have fallout or pass due cards that hit every day. Um, some stores have set dates for monthly customers, uh, maybe the 1st, the 3rd, the 15th, the 25th, whatever the case might be. Um, some stores have it every day. I mean, personally, I'm an advocate um, of having the customer do as close to their pay cycle as possible. Quite frankly, Saturday is just convenient for us. Most of our customers don't get paid on Saturday. You know, paydays are Wednesdays every week or every two weeks, Thursday weekly or Fridays. Most of our customers are paid on those days. They're not paid on Saturdays. We set it up on Saturday, so it's easier for us to measure as a metric and easier for us to collect on. Some people believe giving them two or three days to get paid and come into your store is a good thing. I personally believe if they're paid on Thursday, why not be due on Thursday? A lot of people, have checks are you know, working their way out, they're phasing out, direct deposit's kind of the new thing, so if the money's in their bank on Thursday, I want paid on Thursday. I don't want to give them two days to go and find something else, uh, you know, some other bill they could or could not pay. If they have to make the choice and I have to give them a fallout call, I want to do it on the day they get paid. You know, if they get their monthly check on the 3rd or the 17th or the pension, whatever it is, if they get it paid on the 17th, why would I put them on the 3rd and hope that they keep that money to the side or hope that they pay me? If I, if I make them do it on the 17th or the 18th, then I've just got a better chance of collecting that money before they find another expense or before they find something else to spend that money on. But yeah, Saturdays is it's easy, it's convenient. Uh, collections are never a good reason to stay open late, uh, and if you're doing it right, you won't have to. Um, again, I don't want to get reflecting too much into my stores. I mean, we, we do really well. You know, if you don't know Lewis and you don't know his group of stores, you know, as a company, we average about a 5% card close every week and about a 17 open, 16, 17 open. Some stores are, you know, statistically much lower in both categories, and every once in a while you run into a roadblock, but, you know, these programs work. Um, and back to the point, we don't answer the phone at 8.01. If our store closes at 8 o'clock, 8.01 is a real faux pas. You know, Saturday you close at 6 o'clock and you take a payment after 6 o'clock, all you're doing, again, back into the training of the customer, it's acceptable to be late. You know, it's acceptable to pay you after 6 o'clock. Don't open that. It's a terrible, it's a terrible door to walk through, folks. Um, you know, your account manager should be taking money on the road after you close. You shouldn't be answering the phone at all. You know, this is when I expect to be paid if you're due by Monday at 8 p.m., then if I answer the phone at 8.01 and take your money at 8.01, next week it's 8.02. The week after that, it's, they're fussing at somebody Tuesday morning because they didn't stay late Monday night and take the payment, and they don't want to pay the fee. You know, again, you have to have that staff and that mentality that this is what's expected from the customer, um, and they follow through on it. So if you're, doing it, if you're doing it right, you'll never have to stay late. 
And then, of course, better collections equals more money. Higher percent collected, more flow through, less running time, less phone calls. Uh, Luis Garcia, you know, when I met him, uh, convinced me on an acronym, was it Crew Credit Gain Profit? You know, and this is how important it was to him, is, is how he arranged this. Crew are the people. You know, if you had the right people in place and credit is in line, you will gain, you will profit. You know, he doesn't put profit in front of it. He doesn't put um, gain in front of it. Uh, having the right people and having the right credit will equal gain and profit. So you don't have to focus on those first. Uh, we talk all the time about chasing your tails. If your collections are high, your Monday's open high, you're focused on collecting. If your numbers are low, then what are your people focused on? They're focused on sales. You know, if you're at an 8% on a Tuesday, I mean, how many calls is that? I mean, is it 50 calls, 60 calls? You know, a competent account manager or store staff can make 50, 60 calls in an hour or two. But then he has eight or 10 hours to sell. So again, if you're, if you're chasing your tails on collections, you're not selling. Good, all right, questions? Any questions? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Perfectly perfect ones. Yes. One you never want to concede that it's okay to be late, but after months or years, or maybe you've entered a different store where they've already been taught that it's okay to be late. What are some different kind of steps or things that you can do to try and retrain that customer to get them back well, on? I mean, a lot of that's just the real basic stuff. It's, it's all about that communication piece and finding out, you know, with the willingness and the ability matrix i mean if they're off their cycle you've got to sit down and go okay well where are you is it do you have the willingness and ability but we're just not clear on what that next due date is or what your pay cycle is because what this all boils down to is getting the customer on the right payment date on the right payment cycle if i can though but the perfectly per uh, the perfectly late the ones that are going to pay you four days late each week yeah. you know what you may try uh when you make that saturday call and they answer the phone anyway how about we switch you to monthly? We save you 20 bucks a month. You know what I'm saying? Well, we don't want to concede to the fact that it's okay to pay late, but we also well, don't but, want to give up options. Well, but maybe you do. I mean, it's, look, what's your standard? Are you at 7.9? Are you at 9.9? Nine, nine? Are you at 4.9? Well, guess what? That's where that person falls in, but that's your decision, not theirs. Okay? And, and if you really think about that, I mean, look, we, we have people that are perfectly late all the time. They may be due on Saturday, but they're going to pay you every Monday. You move them to Monday, and guess what? They're going to pay you on Wednesday. Just leave them on Saturday. Yes? Absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody else? Yes? That's true. Are, you've got a customer who gets paid on Friday. It's been verified, verified to death, and they're still coming in and paying you on Wednesday. My thoughts are that they're holding on to that 30 bucks just to make sure nothing happens. When they've got enough gas and enough lunch to be able to get to the end of the week, and they feel secure, that's when they're coming in to pay you. What do you think about that? Again, I mean, are they continually paying you is the question. Yeah. So. And that's fine. That's that perfectly late customer, and that's that's that percentage that you decide is okay. Okay, that's the one. That's the percentage you decide is okay. Like for us, we have a seven nine card close percentage that we look for every Saturday. These guys want four yeah. nine. No, no one. Before you get freak out, no one's been at seven nine in six years. I okay, mean. so but that's our <laughs> number, all right? Seven nines our number. But they're usually running four nine to five, and and these are inner city stores, okay? These are not, I mean, these are inner city Baltimore stores, okay? These are not, you know, rural stores. Now I do have three main stores, and guess what? We're doing the same thing there, so it works everywhere. But it's about having that right process, making sure that your coworkers are trained and following your programs, okay? And just making sure that everyone's clear on what that communication piece is. Keith, what are you close? What's your average for the year? We're 
1,200 accounts, uh, a little bit over 600 customers, and I think last week we closed at like a 3.8 or 4. I mean, it's, and that's our number. We're, we're 4% or less per week. Um, opens are generally under 15. Same. I think Mother's Day weekend we were a little high. It was like 17, but that's, that's a holiday weekend for you. You know, so. Yeah. But it, it ain't me. I just oh. told them, here's the concept. You execute it. Uh, but a lot of this is it. I mean, this, this is right here. I mean, if we had to <clears throat> narrow it down to a few magic steps, the Monday open, you know, that's, that's big. The Monday open is your, your biggest key. Well, it's lunchtime, and uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. All right. Good job.